Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you all to our divine service for this last Sunday of the Epiphany season as we observe the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ. For those of you joining us online, uh, if you want to get a copy of the bulletin to follow along, simply go to our webpage, www.mountcalvarypeoria.org, and then look under media, and you'll see where you can download a copy of that. For the rest of you all, if you take time to fill out one of the uh, cards in the pews in front of you for registration and drop it off in the offering plate when you depart, we appreciate your help with that. And now everyone take a moment to wave at one another. There you have passed the peace. And with that said, we begin with our opening hymn. I invite you to stand for the order of confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. loved in the Lord, let us, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. I invite you to examine your conscience now in silence before the Lord, according to his word, and your place in life. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors with ourselves. We especially deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your full name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of word, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. 
ever singing your praise. How lovely is your grace, O Lord. My soul has sings to the glories of the Lord. My heart has sings to the glory of the living God. We will worship the Lord, the face of the Lord. The Lord is our Savior, the Lord is the Savior, and the Lord is the Lord. Now we think the Savior of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, who is the Lord of all of us, and is the King of all praise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated.
first reading this morning is from the book of Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead, as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zoar. And the Lord said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. I've let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed and his vigor unabated. And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, none like him for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, and for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is exalted in all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name, holy is he. Exalt the Lord our God, worship at his footstool, holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among the trees, Samuel also was among those who called upon his name. They called to the Lord, and he answered them. In the pillar of cloud he spoke to them. They kept his testimonies and the statute that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were giving not them, but an answer of their own doings. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Second reading is from the book of Hebrews, the third chapter. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now, Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house. If indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting and our hope. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand for the gospel verse. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke is recorded in the ninth chapter. Now, about eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now, Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated for the hymn of the day. And so I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace. God the Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, and behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. And so we have our final epiphany of the season as we prepare to head into Lent just this Wednesday. And this epiphany on the mountaintop seems the perfect bookend to the epiphany that we heard of on the first Sunday of the season. You might remember that it's Jesus' baptism, as the Father presented his Son to Israel as her appointed Savior, he said, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And now, 
as Jesus resolutely sets his face to go to Jerusalem to do all that the Father had sent him to do, we hear the Father speak again. This is my Son, the Chosen One. Listen to him. Listen to him. Why that command? Well, simply because Peter and the others had not been listening. There is a popular observation these days to the effect that most people listen only in order to respond rather than listening in order to understand. About eight days before the Transfiguration, Jesus had told the Twelve clearly that when he got to Jerusalem this time, he was going to be betrayed and rejected and killed, and on the third day, rise. And Peter, without missing a beat, simply said, No! That can't happen. That's not the way the Messiah's work gets done. Peter wasn't listening. He wasn't listening to understand. He simply responded instinctually. And so Jesus took Peter and James and John up that nameless mountain, and he was transfigured before him. His divine glory shone through his human flesh, showing that he is God and man in one person. Hence, whatever he does is the work of God, and if God wills to bring the redemption of all men and women through his own sacrificial suffering and death and resurrection, then so be it. This is a mystery to bow before in awe, It is not a plan to be debated or discussed. And yet, well, there is more here than Jesus simply glowing in order to get Peter and James and John's attention. And it begins with Moses and Elijah appearing in glory to talk with Jesus about his exodus. Now, I know our translations say his departure, but exodus is the literal word there, and and there's a reason for that. Let me back up. So, Moses and Elijah were there in glory, and you might say, well, why those two? Why them? Well, think about what Peter had first objected to. He objected to the idea of Jesus' Messiah being rejected and killed by the people. Peter could not conceive how the Messiah, the culmination of all the prophets, could possibly be rejected by the people that he was come to save. But Moses was there. And, and how had the people of Israel treated Moses at least half a dozen times, right? They wanted to kill him during the Exodus. They rebelled against him. They were constantly grumbling against him. And then Elijah was there too. And what had Ahab and Jezebel wanted to do to him as he called a wandering Israel to reject idolatry and return to the Lord? They wanted him dead. Here were two witnesses to the people's antipathy for the one who bears God's word to them. And so by their presence on that mountaintop, they gave testimony to Peter and James and John that far from a mistake, the rejection of Jesus by the nation was the fulfillment of human rebellion against God that had started back in Eden. Until new life could be won for the descendants of Adam and Eve, they could do nothing but reject the Christ, and in that rejection bring all sin to a head so that it could be dealt with once and for all. So if rejection and death had to be part of the work, what were Peter and the rest to do? Listen. Listen and follow. After all, despite what Moses and Elijah had dealt with during their time of service, when they were there with Jesus on the mountain, they appeared in glory. The suffering, the hardship that they were called to endure robbed them of nothing in Christ. With him, they were in grace. Suffering and death do not impede God's work. And they spoke with Jesus about his exodus, and this is what brings everything into focus. Think for a moment of the first exodus, right? It began with the lambs being killed so that their blood would protect the faithful from that final terrible plague in Egypt, the death of the firstborn. And then the people were led out from slavery and Egyptian idolatry with that pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. God's glory physically manifest to them so that they would be comforted and in encouraged and strengthened by his presence. And when they despaired of death at the shores of the Red Sea, God simply led them through the waters as on dry ground. And when they feared for food or for drink, God provided. So you may also remember that when God proposed them that they come into the promised land by way of the south, fear finally got the better of them. And the people refused. The enemy seemed too great, despite all that they had already experienced with God, and for that reason, a whole generation failed to enter the promised land. 
So what was Jesus about to do at Jerusalem? Was not his blood going to be shed to protect the people from judgment and death? Was not he, the firstborn, about to die our death so that we would go free? Was not he about to make the grave the way to life through his own death and resurrection? Would he not ascend to the Father and pour out his Holy Spirit so that all would receive the inheritance of eternal life and be made sons and daughters of the Most High? And yet, like the Israel of old, balking at God, leading them into the promised land by way of the south, Peter and the twelve balked at the messianic work that was set before him, a work that required Jesus' death and resurrection. So just as God had manifested his glory in that pillar of cloud and fire to lead and encourage and reassure Jesus now by his transfiguration on that mountaintop, manifests the Shekinah glory of God shining through his flesh so that Peter and James and John would follow him, trusting in the divine presence, the divine work, a work that would indeed lead Jesus to Jerusalem, to the cross, to resurrection and to new life. And this is for us, too. You know, we shy away from the hard things of this life. Think of how hard it is to forgive a wrong that was done against you. Think about how hard it is to be patient in the midst of suffering. Sometimes it's terribly hard to resist temptation. Or maybe to give up worldly gain or status when that's what you must put at risk in order to do God's will in Christ. We are not much fans of dying to our wants, desires, and wishes when God calls us to what is better in Christ. But remember, Jesus told the disciples, if you want to come after me, if you want to follow in the way that I lead, you must take up the cross. Say no to yourself and follow. That that looks too hard at times, too unpromising. But Jesus, God in the flesh, our light, leads the way through the wilderness and to the promise. And he provides and he guards and protects as he shines with that unborrowed light. We follow him through Lent to Easter. We follow him through repentance to new life. We follow him through confession to absolution. He leads and he is always with us so that we can be assured and comforted and strengthened knowing that even as we follow him to the death of our old nature, we shall continue to follow him through death to life. Because he accomplished his exodus at Jerusalem, we are now with him on an exodus from the old to the new. And if he does not yet return for a time, we shall follow him through the grave, through death of the body, to the glory that Moses and Elijah rest in. For just as Jesus left death in the grave behind, we too shall live and be raised, and not just in the future. You are raised with Christ now. The greater part of your resurrection is already done as you share in his life now and live in his light and in his love. So leave the old behind and listen to the Chosen One, the Father's beloved Son, your Christ. Hear him and follow. Amen. And now may that peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until the glorious day of his appearing. Amen. I invite you to stand as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God. God and his Father before all the worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, God of not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, who was from the Father, by the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified by the also for us and the conscious power. He suffered and made his error. And the third day he rose again from wherever he was created, and said to him, and said to the right hand of the Father, and he will come in here the Lord, and he will judge us all the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no name. Not only is there a spirit, the Lord in your life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who sold by the prophets, and I am the one of the holy Christian acts by the church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I know that the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen.
And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, whose eyes are upon the righteous and whose ears are open to their prayers, hear now the prayer of your people and grant us all such things as we need for the health of our souls and bodies. O Lord, in your mercy, we praise you, O God, for the precious gift of your Son, and we bless you especially this day for the revelation of your will in our Savior's glorious transfiguration on the holy mountain. By this mighty sign, give to us, Lord, and to all your people a clearer vision and higher knowledge of Christ. Give us grace to behold him with the eyes of faith and the splendor of his eternal deity and to worship and adore him in sincerity and truth. And grant that as we behold the radiance of his heavenly beauty, we may know him and believe in him as the light of the world, the son of righteousness, and the express image of your own divine being. O Lord, in your mercy. By the sign of your voice and command, Lord God, give us an enlivened faith in the doctrine of your Son, a joyful readiness to believe his promise and a spirited willingness to heed his commandments. By the sign of the bright cloud, manifest to us each day the radiant presence of your holy angels and assure us of their charge concerning us. And in the sign of Moses and Elijah, show us that blessed are the dead who die in faith, blessed are they who live in Christ, and blessed are all who believe, for they shall know the power of his resurrection and shall be changed from glory into glory. O Lord, in your mercy. O God and Father, as in Jesus you made humanity the shrine of your Godhead, let your Holy Spirit find a dwelling place in our poor bodies and transform our weak, sinful lives into the radiance of goodness, purity, and righteousness. Transform our minds by the renewing grace that flows from you. Transform our vision, our understanding, our judgments, yes, our whole persons, to reflect the mind of Christ. Take our sicknesses, pains, wounds, and hurts. Take our disappointments, defeats, and despair. Take our sorrows and mourning. Take our pride and anger. Take our selfishness and envy. Take our hate and fear. Take all of these, O Father, and transform them by the touch of Jesus into noble impulses, pure motives, kind thoughts, constructive deeds, high courage, and true faith. O Lord, in your mercy. Look upon your church, O Lord, here and in all places, and grant that we who bear the name of Christ may daily offer up to you the acceptable sacrifices of repentance, thanksgiving, and loving obedience. O Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our nation, O God, deliver it from all workers of iniquity and purge it from all unrighteousness. Have mercy upon us, and by your great power save and defend us, O Lord, in your mercy. For our whole world, we pray, grant that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving health among the nations, O Lord, in your mercy. And hear us as we bring our concerns to you in our hearts. We give thanks for the healthy birth of Etta Grace to Mary and Edwin Romero. Grant them love and faith all their days. Speed recovery for Terry Cronkey, strengthen Bill Barr, Herman Goat, Tanea Howe, Katie Payton, Lisa Garrison, Ron Afterberg, Ada Becker, Scott Grinslade, Pastor Mark Matthews, Tina Maxwell, and Patty Coy. Grant health and healing to Deb Wilson, Katie Taggy, Jessica Foreman, Brenda Guswell, Linda Perone, David Hine, PJ Camacho. Lori Livingston, Pam Barr, Earl Boyette, Lavelle Borders, Jackie Pendarvis, and Mary Dowd. Bless Sarah and Wendy in the midst of their struggles and provide healing and grace to all. Give continued healing to Miguel Bulwer, Joan Ross, Amanda Carpenter, Richard Coulter, and Penelope Lampton, Carol Hoffman, Jim Casper, Carol Lockridge, Joy Wessler, Penny Voss, Ms. Ritter, Gary Ruffle, and Natalie Felice. Give relief to Mark Manti. Give healing to Harriet Coy, Brian Kelly, Michael Wilson, Virginia David Shirley, and Deaconess Jillian. Grant recovery to Mark. Grant health and strength to Bob Kistner, Sally Taylor, Ann Bulworth, Marjorie Roskuski, Valerie, Chris, Patty, Jim, and Gary. Continue to heal Joan, Dale, and Richard. Give continued strength to Jan. Also watch over Lewis Hall, Sally Leon, Joanne Bettinghouse, TJ, Maureen, and her children, Cheryl, Gloria, Richard, Sally, and Steve. Bless and keep Jenny Bradley, Pat Getz, Theo Norman, Rebecca, Lois, Tanisha, Jenny, John, Laurel, Constance, Linda, Carl, Kenneth, and Lori. Grant them all wellness. Speed healing for Pam and Dolores. 
lost the Tompkins family and Clara, grant grace to Jackie and her family, give relief to Kathy and Lil. Grant strength and healing to Josh, Bill, Bray, Lynn, and Gabby, give health to Gordon, Jim, and Lloyd, be with all travelers to give them safe journeys. Also watch over Shirley, Max, Miracle, Neil, Shane, Faith, Jenna, Steve, Eric, Gloria, Sandra, and Phyllis, give grace and healing to Christiane, Ruth, and Phyllis, be with Luann and Shelby Cooper and Yasmin, uphold Rick and Harold Pauli, Give healing to Gary, strength and Sharon and Kathy. Be with Tommy Porterfield, Scott Wilson, Maria Victoria Corrales, Pastor Drews, Valerie Connor, Joel and Michael, Teresa Carrick, Deb Alec, Marsha, Delcy Lane, Becky Richards, Dave, Mark Dickman, Olivia Bradley, Sharon Rumble, Cherry Emberton, Sandra, Larry, Rod, Ginny, Dave, Shannon, Ward, Michael, Dale, Kathy, Gordon, Maureen, Pastor Neiman, Mary, Ethan, and Gail and Jonathan to give them all healing and strength according to your will. Support those all who are recovering from disasters of various sorts and be with those who are working to bring relief in every place where they are needed. We pray that you bring peace and justice to the nations and keep the scourge of war far off. Stay the hand of the aggressor and comfort and guard the innocent. Bring an end to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Do not let it spread. We pray for those suffering from the coronavirus and ask you to continue to impede its spread, grant healing and relief, give success to efforts at mitigation, also, give your grace and strength to all medical workers and first responders. Heal the divisions that bring bitterness to our nation. We especially implore your grace to bring an end to all ethnic and racial bigotry and to grant understanding, grace, and equity to all. We lift up all who have suffered violent attacks this last week, especially victims of recent shootings, praying that you grant mercy, healing, faith, and justice, O Lord. Bring us peace. Watch over Pastor Hake and his family. Bless their service. Bless the ministry of Concordia Lutheran School. Be with all students and educators everywhere to keep them in health. Give grace and support to all learning situations. Be with our synod and all its officers, Matthew, our synodical president, Mark, our district president, and all synod and district officials, that they may be guided by your word to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Grant stability, faith, and hope to all who are struggling in this economy. Bless the people of Haiti as they struggle to recover and establish a stable civil life. Grant shelter and protection to all refugees, especially those displaced by the conflict in Syria. Finally, we ask that you send your spirit of peace to Somalia, Myanmar, Venezuela, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Nagorno-Karabakh, the Middle East, especially Israel, Gaza, Iraq, Egypt, Syria, and Yemen, and all places torn by war or civil strife. O oh Lord, in your mercy. We also ask that while our nation continues to live with peril and while many remain in harm's way, that you would watch over us and show your mercy to all who are in danger or who suffer in any way. Comfort those who mourn, heal those who are injured, give wisdom and humility to those in authority. Continue to be with Derek Foote, Joshua Zook, Alex Zook, Elizabeth Auer, and all deployed and active duty military personnel and their families. We pray you to watch over Zeke Benders as he continues his training. We continue in prayer for those seeking to leave Afghanistan, be the shield and protector of the innocent, protect all innocent civilians everywhere, bring the wicked to justice, defend the righteous and lead all to repent of evil and seek your peace. We know that all things are in your hands, Father. We ask that you would bring justice and establish fair government according to your good and perfect will. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O you who are near to all them that call upon you in truth, hear our prayer. And by your mercy, grant our petitions for Christ's sake. For it is in his name we pray, as he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. And we join in the singing of the offertory. I prepare the table. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who had his transfiguration, revealed his glory to his disciples, that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection, and with all the faithful, look forward to the glory of life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. <coughs> With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Maybe may be seated as we sing the Lamb of God. May the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen you in true faith, granting you the forgiveness of sins unto life everlasting. 
Depart in peace. Amen. We join in the next minutes. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. We join in the closing hymn. One quick word. Uh, as I mentioned, this Wednesday is the beginning of Lent. Ash Wednesday, we will have two services, 11.15 or 6.30 in the evening. Uh, if you have any 
stray palms from last year. If you get them here by Tuesday morning, I will use them in preparing the ashes for imposition on Ash Wednesday. With that said, the service has ended. Go in peace. Thank you.